Now, when flying into Indonesia, you find an enormous archipelago nation made up of more than 17,000 islands. The islands of Bali, Java, and Sumatra have at different times throughout history been connected to the Malay Peninsula, which connects to the rest of Southeast Asia. But the island of Flores has always been an island, separated by a deep ocean channel, and travel here has always been really difficult and extremely dangerous due to strong ocean currents. Now the fact that people made it here and established a life here is a real testament to the ingenuity and strength of human beings. In the western half of Flores, outside of the town of Rutang, is where we can find the Liang Bua Cave. So this is the Liang Bua Cave. And the site where they found Homo floresiensis. So I finally made it to the Flores Island here in Indonesia. And of course, it's a tropical island, so what's not to like about it? And I've come to this cave because it's the first time I've done really an anthropological tourism. And I've got to say I'm liking it. I think I might do this more often. Um, as you can see, I have some fans over here. They like the boule. Boule fan club. Ooh! Snicker, snicker, snicker. And I just want to talk for a minute about the many mysteries that Homo floresiensis presents to the public. All important archaeological sites, this one had uh, special circumstances which helped to preserve everything there. Um, there was a special wall, well, this is the modern wall, but before it was an earthen wall that kind of trapped everything inside. And I think it was in the 1960s when archaeologists first found some stone tools. So it's very nice to come to this place to see the the rare, unexplored past of the human story. It was in 2003 when Brown and Morwood led a team of Australian and Indonesian archaeologists to uncover the human remains at Leong Gua. They had found a new species of people they called Homo floresiensis. The holotype is called LB1, a woman about 30 years old at death based on dental eruption. She was about 3 feet tall and had a small skull with a volume of 380 cubic centimeters which is equal to the average of the modern chimpanzee and Lucy, the Australopithecus from three million years ago. These are the basic facts, but when we look deeper, we get into a messy debate about whether or not she should belong to Homo sapiens or a new species. Barham claimed LB1's body size was due to dwarfism, and the small brain size was caused by microcephaly, a disorder that causes small head size and small brain size. Reynolds and Barham also said that the impressive stone tools found in the cave were too advanced for their time and place of deposition. They believe that only Homo sapiens are capable of manufacturing the complex tools found in those sediments dated to 78,000 years ago. Brown and Morwood responded that it was really unlikely all nine individuals found in the cave suffered from dwarfism and microcephaly. CT scans of LB1's skull show that she had very well-developed temporal lobes, suggesting strong communication skills and a well-developed frontal lobe giving her the ability to create complex thoughts about the future. Therefore, she didn't experience microcephaly because it causes more developmental delays in those affected by it. Stone tools dated to about 840,000 years ago were found only 50 kilometers away from Myungbwa, crushing the argument that the tools found near LB1 were too advanced for that time and place in the world. Further research demonstrated the uniqueness of LB1 and the need for the designation of her own species. Larson showed that her shoulders were adapted for more frontal motion, unlike the lateral movements of Homo sapiens shoulders. Toshiri also showed that the wrist bones of LB1 were more similar to earlier hominids and modern apes rather than Homo sapiens. In the end, there are too many unknowns to make definitive conclusions about the origins of Homo floresiensis. The team who directs the excavation of Gangbua today accepts the idea that the people found on Flores may have arrived as smaller individuals who experienced dwarfism as an adaptation to the environments of other islands. The craniums of Homo habilis and LB1 share a lot of commonalities, so they also accept the possibility that Homo floresiensis descended from a hominid similar to Homo habilis who arrived in Southeast Asia a long time ago. As we find more remains around the regions touching the Indian Ocean, our understanding of the evolutionary development of humanity will undoubtedly take a major leap forward. So if you decide to come to Flores, go to the town of Rutang and find yourself a guide for about 60,000 rupiah and then pay the entrance fee of also about 20,000 rupiah. Uh, along the way you'll see some rolling volcanoes, some rice fields, village life. 
And once you're here, you can enjoy the company of nice locals as well.